Welcome to section 4.8 and 4.9. So 4.8 is going to talk about how we get genetic variation from essentially meiosis and sexual reproduction. So there's three events that are going to happen during uh, meiosis itself or right after when you go through the fertilization process. So the first event that we have will be crossing over, and this is going to happen during meiosis, actually at the very beginning of it. You have independent assortment, which will occur during meiosis right after that, and then random fertilization, which will be the actual fertilization event. So this will be after meiosis when the sperm and the egg ultimately get together and combine. So starting off, uh, we can cover first the idea of crossing over. So what we're going to do here is when you line up those two homologs, so this could be essentially like chromosome 1 and you have mom's version and you've got dad's version, and so these chromosomes have the same overall genes on them. They're pretty much equivalent. They might not code for the same version of everything. One might say red hair, one might say brown hair, but ultimately they still code for the same general things. And so what you can do is you can swap pieces of these. So at the very beginning of meiosis 1, these homologs will line up together. Remember in metaphase 1, we said the homologs line up, they're like double file, and so they can actually swap chunks. This would be kind of like if you took your arm and swapped it with somebody else's arm, and you swapped an equivalent piece, so you still have a full arm. It's just, you know, mine could shift and suddenly it's like a different skin tone or whatever else because this part of my arm came from somebody else and they have my part of the arm. We'd both still be able to function. If we could magically just swap these, we'd still both have regular old arms. But what we would have, though, is our overall body would be a slight hybrid, a slight mixing where I have a chunk of theirs and they have a chunk of mine. And that's exactly what we see here. So we now have what's essentially dad's chromosome, but it has a chunk of mom's for part of it. And we have mom's chromosome that has a chunk of dad's. So this is going to have the effect of mixing things. So we can have a single chromosome now that's not just mom's or just dad's, which is how it was at the start. We can now get a chromosome that has a random amount of mom's or a random amount of dad's mixed in with the other parents. You know, so it might be 90% mom's, 10% dad's. It could be 80%, 20%. It could be 100% zero. But this mixing allows us to get these new combinations that wouldn't exist otherwise. You'd always just get all mom's or all dad's chromosome. So cr crossing over will cause a huge amount of diversity because you don't just get you know mom's traits or dad's traits. You can get on a single chromosome a mix. Now after this, when we line up the chromosomes, especially during this first metaphase, where we line up the homologs, you can ultimately either grab mom's chromosome or dad's chromosome. Because we already said these homologs, you have mom's and dad's version lining up together. That's what homologs are. So in this case, we can assume that the purplish is dad and we'll say red is mom. So in this case, you'll notice that for the large chromosome, dad's lined up at the top and mom's lined up at the top with it for the second type of chromosome. So when this process occurs, you see that this cell up at the top is going to get dad's version of one, mom's version of chromosome two. The other cell is going to get mom's version of chromosome one, dad's version of chromosome two. If you look at an organism that has 23 different types of chromosomes like us, you can get a lot of different variation based upon which one you get, mom's or dad's, for each of those 23. If you think of it this way, let's say mom's is the equivalent of a zero and dad's is the equivalent of a one. This is kind of like having a phone number that only has zeros and ones, but it's 23 digits long. So for each of these, we can essentially randomly get either a one or a zero. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of different combinations that we can get. Ultimately, for humans with 23 different types of chromosomes, so 23 different shots to get version A or version B, it's about 1 in 8 million. So humans can essentially produce 8 million different sex cells that are different from one another just through independent assortment. This is not including crossing over. So this allows for us to have this huge diversity of possible gametes just through independent assortment, you know, which unique combination of moms and dads you have. Now granted, this number will be a lot smaller if it's something like a fruit fly that only has four chromosome types, uh, but this could also be a lot bigger if you've got something like a plant that might have over a hundred chromosome types. So there's going to be a lot of diversity just from independent assortment. Now the third thing is random fertilization. So we've got this sperm that's a one in eight million chance that it's the same 
that's not including crossing over. We're going to ignore that. And then we have this ova, the egg essentially, that's got a 1 in 8 million shot. So for you to get the same sperm that manages to meet up with the same identical egg, the odds of that are about 1 in 64 trillion. You know, this is exceedingly, exceedingly rare that that would ever happen. And once again, this is not including the idea of crossing over. We're ignoring that because technically it's not like you just get moms or just get dads. Technically, each of those can be a unique mixture itself that's a varying amount of moms and dads. So when you add that in, it's pretty much impossible to get identical twins through any means other than having it be the same egg and the same sperm. And that's where you get actual identical twins, is where it's the same egg and the same sperm that as it's developing accidentally breaks apart and each part develops into a person. So that's why they have the same genetics. The odds of you having a brother or sister, regardless of when they're born, that's identical to you is pretty much non-existent.